Hello, welcome back to Core Finance. I'm Matt Brown, and as ever, it gives me great pleasure to have Sean Richards back on the show from Not a Yes Man Economics. One question for you, Sean. Yields, can they ever go up? Well, this is um, something that I've been thinking about over the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. And if we step back, the rationale, I think, for how this comes is, if we look at how the credit crunch began, mm -hmm. central banks thought at first that they could deal with it by cutting short-term interest rates, what we call bank rate in the UK, um, I suppose Fed funds in the US. There's several of them for the ECB, so the deposit rate. That went wrong for them because they didn't get the impact they hoped. They mm. thought, like in the UK sense, bank rate cut on the order of 5%, that that would fix it. Well, it didn't. And um, so then they started to think of the fact that there were other interest rates. Before then, there was an assumption among sort of academic thought, and I think central bankers, that you just moved the short-term rate and you got what you wanted. Well, in a crisis, there wasn't. <laughs> then they panicked. And, and this was the next step where they moved to longer-term interest rates. But, hey, hang on a minute. We can influence what businesses pay. Mm -hmm. We can influence mortgage rates. And this is how QE began. And this is the lead-in to then the next sector because, of course, they went in and, as ever, it was going to be temporary. And, as ever, it wasn't. And now, all these years later, it looks permanent. Since then, We've had various flourishes where yields have gone up, for example, in the euro area crisis, mm -hmm. places like Portugal, uh, Greece, Ireland, and it affected some others at the same time too. But now, further down the road, virtually everywhere you look, yields are actually quite low. In fact, recently, they've got lower again. Mm -hmm. Now, this in economics terms is all wrong, because if you look at where we are in the cycle, euro area is doing quite well, US is doing quite well. Through the widening, actually, the UK isn't doing too badly. There'd be times when this sort of growth would have been considered all right. So yield should be picking up higher. Everyone keeps forecasting it, except it doesn't happen. Again, we had a flicker, like, for example, when um, Trump was elected. American yields went higher. But now, if we look at them, there's an interesting scenario whereby, if you look across what people mean by a flat yield curve is, the gap from one end to the other now isn't very much. Mm -hmm. Two-year yield, when I looked at it this morning, 1.8%. 30-year yield, 2.71%. So if that market is right, what it's telling us is it's not expecting very much for the next 30 years, which is in some ways heartening, in some ways depressing. Mm -hmm. And there's a further bit to this, because if we then look at that, that used to mean that a recession was on its way. In fact... These days, what it means is the central banks have rigged the market, fixed the market, bought them all, whichever way you want to express that. Mm -hmm. And so this poses the question, which we came in, will they let them rise again? And I think the answer to that is, we'll have fluctuations, obviously, but whilst it remains within their control, bond yields won't rise much. Now, why won't they rise much? Because if we look at it from the other side, There'll be problems with the economy if mortgage rates rise. Mm -hmm. Seems forever, if you look at the amount of debt around, that we could take less and less of a rise in the past. That's a point. Actually, more to the fitting is the way that governments have got addicted to low bond yields. This is something that doesn't get much publicity, but this has saved governments an enormous amount of money. Inflate your way out of debt? Maybe? Partly, but on the other side of the fact that they just pay so little on it now. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at somewhere like Germany, you know, in many respects it's success with its economy, but bond yields are so low, it costs, for all intents and purposes, nothing for it to issue. And it would, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you came to a scenario where governments had to start paying, they'd object, put pressure on the central banks. Now, mm. I know they're supposed to be independent, but no one really believes that anymore, I don't think. And so there is a sort of trap where two areas, things would come in quite quickly. So we could see a move for a bit, then they'd pour in. So then we come back to the sort of third leg of the argument, I think, that to see a real move now would require quite a crisis. I'm not saying that's impossible. In fact, the way they're controlling it probably makes it more likely. But it would need something like the credit crunch again. So a few questions for you. A, do central banks want to steepen the curve again? Are they happy where it is? B, if they do, how will they go about that? And for you and I, average day folk, uh, obviously mortgage rates, if they stay, stay low, fantastic. But what does that also mean for pensions? So for the man on the street, 
Well, for the, the first is, question... Is this a good thing? The first question is, and here's where they're a bit like sort of January with two faces, the central banks, they simultaneously do and don't want that. What I mean mm. by this is they'd quite like a situation of some rise in long yields because then that would be a sort of... They'd regard that as a signal that things that they've done have worked. In mm. old era policy, when the economy picked up, bond yields rose in response, people want a higher return, and that worked. On the other hand, for the reasons I've quoted earlier, they don't want that. Also from their own point of view, because they'd have the issue of all the bonds they've bought being at a loss. Mm -hmm. Now, this, this thing kicks off occasionally, and people often reply to me, they'll get 100 back. Fair enough. But when you've paid 140 for it, exactly. that's 40 points lower. So that's the issue of the first question. What was the second again? Sorry, Ramon. Uh, how would they go about doing that? Would it be a case of buying back the bonds? Uh, aggressively? Would that, would well, that... now, here's... The, oh, here... sorry, some, I should say selling. selling them back to the market. Yeah, yeah. or the alternative is, and I, this is, it's funny how time passes, but something I suggested over four years ago for the UK, is that the Bank of England, because the bonds mature from time to time, let them. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we, the Roll Bank of England over. goes out and buys again, so mm -hmm. in effect the position gets rolled over and stays the same size. We'll just simply let them go. If we'd have done that, by now, and I'm not saying it would make an enormous dent in it, but 60, 70 billion mm -hmm. would have been off it, ironically probably a bit more than what they added to last August. Um, but yes, that could be done. Um, so that would be a start. The issue is it would still remain with us with that for a very long time because the longest guilt in the UK is 2068 they hold. Mm -hmm. But even so, you could start to chip back that way. And then at some point, why not sell them off? But then we get to the problem, isn't it? At the point they said that, everyone would think they'd be selling the lot. Yields might shoot up, and we'd probably find a few months later they'd start buying again. That's the problem when mm. you meddle with things. And um, for the average Joe on the street, mortgage rates staying low, is, is that a good thing? But, but what about my pension? Um, well, there's a catch. S switching to the pensions thing, then more and more people are going to find themselves when they get the sort of forecasts that are done, remember these are only forecasts, mm -hmm. but with negative numbers on them. Mm -hmm. How does anything, if you look at long-term saving, long-term pensions work, when you're looking at a negative return? It just simply doesn't. Who would do it? What mm -hmm. would be the point? You'd keep the money in your pocket, wouldn't you? So there's a big issue around that. And this comes back to the same point again with the bonds thing, that a lot of this is essentially borrowing from the future. If you have all the money now, and this is fantastic, well, how are people in 30 years' time going to make some money, which is the point of pension mm -hmm. saving? So it, it poses a lot of questions. And here's an even deeper undercut for you. We're in such a mixed-up world, if you look at places with this, people seem, in things like Sweden, to actually save more in response. Incredible. Well, it, it asks lots of questions, and uh, you've answered lots today, but uh, as ever, Sean Richards from Not A Yes Man Economics. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.